you guys, uh, I'm, I'm throwing these photos up so you guys can weigh in on what do you think is going on here. Let's help us piece together this story. Ew! <laughs> what the hell's that? But the whole the whole point is like if you have to puke, you just, you just unscrew that and you puke into your, <laughs> you can your jacket. seven your thirteen hundred dollar yeah. jacket. God, diarrhea in space must be ridiculous. That's why that's why step one is containment. <laughs> Somebody made a mod to give them huge titties. Yo dong along hudong galagongas. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. I hate I hate seeing I the think, videos of guys that just like that that like fuck with the cops. Oh yeah, like First Amendment auditors. <laughs> First Amendment, like self-proclaimed First Amendment so, auditors. It's, it's so annoying. Very very often. I'm like I hope they get beat. Very often douchebags, yeah. but occasionally, uh, occasionally very annoyingly necessary. I feel annoying, like it's good when... in that they are they are annoying. But yeah. also that it's annoying that they have to do what do they it. do because sure. because from my point of view, it is important that somebody does that. It's a very thankless job. Well, yeah, it, it, and and it's also done for well, you talking about people who thankless do it. motivation. Are you talking about people who do it like for a living professionally, or are you talking about just random dudes on YouTube that are trolling the cops? Uh, more more professionally. Oh yeah, I was just talking about like the trolls on YouTube that are just like on TikTok that'll just like walk up to a, a cop start start fucking with them just because they know they can and they'll just they'll skirt that line of what's within their legal rights. Yeah, and it's like the cop technically can't do anything and they're kind of just doing it for content. And maybe there's a part of that that's oh okay. I think, well, I I don't I don't think much positive of that. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I the people who do it for a living, it's like that's their job, you know. I think, I think the people who hold the, the police accountable are, are doing yeah. everyone a service. Yeah. Not just some, but not some punk who's just like no. throwing donuts at a cop. No. <laughs> and that's, that's, no, that's not crazy. a protected activity either. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. They get, they get close though. They if, get, you're, they, if you're waving a, a poster of a donut at a cop, that's, that's probably <laughs> a, a protected, you know, you, exercise of your right to free speech. Well, speaking of a ball club, I need to get in trouble for in public for wearing these in public. These, <laughs> these delightful socks from our our great leader. Wear them, wear them with uh, sandals to Venice Beach and see what happens. Yeah, you'll never see me again. I'll just get my ass kicked. <laughs> I'll just get my ass jumped by every dude at Muscle Beach. <laughs> they'll dismember me and just hang me from a palm tree i i did not even notice those i'm wearing uh trump socks i know i was like i was kind of I, I now i know what it feels like to be a girlfriend to be a girl <laughs> it's like what well, he didn't even fucking notice i got my hair done and he i got my nails said anything. i changed the color of my hair he didn't even fucking notice i spent 300 dollars on this shot it's over <laughs> i'm going back to mark uh, you know what? I would say those those socks are definitely capable of ending a relationship, depending <laughs> depending on the relationship with you and and your and, entire community. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the Especially circumstances. Yeah. So for those of you who can't, for for our listeners who can't see, I'm wearing uh, the Trump socks, the Trump 2024 socks that my mom got me as a hopefully gag gift. I mean, they're not the most flattering. So you have to, you have to. They literally have a picture of Trump with real, or well not real, but like synthetic hair coming off of the sock. It came with a little comb too. It came with a little green comb to comb his hair, so that I'm always looking fly. My Trumps are always looking fly. <laughs> Got one on each sock. It's such a small shitty comb. Look at this thing. It's already broken. <laughs> I already broke it by combing. This is how thick our our gracious leader's hair is. It's so it's the luscious locks of love. Yeah, I can't look at those and see them as a serious endorsement, uh, but... Yeah. I don't um, know. I guarantee you people wear this to rallies. Guarantee. How do, you get, how do you get somebody to take notice of your socks at a political rally? Just, I mean, every, you're in a crowd. Everybody's feet are hidden. Handstand. <laughs> get really good at doing handstands for like prolonged periods of time. And then yeah. just, you know, have a speaker wired to your feet so you can still talk to people. And wear a uh... and put LEDs on it. Put, put LEDs around your ankles, <laughs> and then learn to clap. What? Learn to clap really loud with your feet <laughs> or your ass. <laughs> Just be naked. That's <laughs> wear, wear a kilt. <laughs> I heard a great joke was like uh, somehow when you're when socks are the only thing you're wearing, you you seem more naked. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, you're more you're more more vulnerable in that state. Yeah, yeah. Because you're 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 essentially naked, but you don't have the grippiness of bare feet. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you're slightly you're off balance. True. And it kind of like when you see someone naked with only socks on, which I don't see too often personally, but it kind of gives the vibe that like, they're like they've been caught. Like it almost yeah. reminds of like like someone that's in the middle of an affair. They're climbing out a window. Yeah, climbing out a window. But socks. Exactly. Yeah. Which I'm like, I don't, I don't get the whole wearing socks while you're doing it thing. Like, I, it feels well, weird. You take, I mean, I, I understand you. You take off your your socks to to, you know, chop your logs. Especially because so. you never know when you're gonna have to bail midway. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have as much grip on those bad boys at a at the drop of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. If you have to flee the bathroom because all of a sudden a centipede starts coming out of the toilet <laughs> and you happen to have superior grip because you're barefoot to begin with, yeah, then my head is off to you. You don't have to outrun the centipede. You just have to outrun your partner. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Hopefully they're wearing socks. Uh, or or the, uh, the, the grippy hospital socks. Have you ever worn those? They're like... <sighs> I don't know if I have. Or you'll see them as I think yoga probably on socks. A, I was probably on a bunch of drugs, you know, when, when I if I was. You have, anesthesia. You have these socks that have uh, little, you know, rubberized dots on the bottom of yeah. them, so you can grip onto. You know, so you're wearing socks, but they're grippy socks. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. I think you should get some of those for Mel just to troll her, <laughs> so she can't shop. Yeah. <laughs> it's like putting a muzzle on her. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that being She'd funny. be so at mad. Least, at least once when she tries to go to shuffle and, and just, just like critical failure. <laughs> <laughs> Have like padlocks on them so she can't take them off. They're like chastity belts for her feet. <laughs> like, uh, uh, finally, it's quiet in the house. <laughs> so I I think that would be hilarious, but I, I don't think it would be the safest thing for you. Uh, no. Or possibly no. for her, depending on how. Yeah. How ba- badly the shuffling fails. Right. It's uh, funny because she's really, she's fairly clumsy, but then she'll, she, like she'll never slip or fall while shuffling. So it's like, it's like she's adapted to it. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like her, like she's like that's evolved. Her, that's her, that's her locomotion kind of style because you're keeping both feet in contact with the ground at all times. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if, she you, has, if you lift one foot and 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 you have one in the air at a time, then right. that's a lot more opportunity to lose balance and fall. Yeah, I don't know how she does. It's like reverse moonwalking. It's so shuff, shuffling should be should be actually more stable because true, you may true. you may have more variance of grip, but you yeah. have you're not your feet are not leaving the floor. You're keeping your Seven weight on both, low. both feet. That's true. That is, maybe that's that's why she does it because she is that clumsy. Maybe she. I've never seen her walk as a normal person. I've never seen her do. A, a, I don't think she can walk what, normally. In, in uh, on on the street in shoes or in the house. Both. Well, how does she? I can like, if we get separated at like a grocery store. I can hear her in the next aisle. You can hear shuffling. I can hear her, like c- coming around, like coming around, like okay, she's coming from this way, and because she's just like she just yeah, she's always in that mode. Do the soles of her shoes have like abnormal wear? It'd be fun. It's just her toes sticking out at the bottom of her <laughs> shoes. It's just worn down to the worn down to the toe. It's so she shuffles every everywhere all the time. Yeah, is what you're telling me. Yeah, I, I think it's probably less pronounced when she we're out and about when she's wearing shoes because it's just harder because there's so much grip. I, I, can but, yeah. she shuffle in like heels? Um, I think heels might be the only thing that. And she doesn't so, like heels, so that's probably why. Because it's just like, it's like getting a cat wet. You know, it's just they can't. Because so, if she was wearing heels, she'd be forced to walk with a normal, right. like a, a typical stride. Somehow she can only walk normally in heels. <laughs> that's the only way that she can walk normally, like a normal human being. That's that's not really what I expected to learn. I thought the shuffling was just a house thing. I thought it was like a, a, a like. No, she'll she'll shuffle around. Just shuffle around town. I completely. I, I've been sleeping on that. I missed it. I, it yeah. It's uh. It's not as obvious. Funny. Probably because just more ambient noise outside. But uh, yeah, it's a thing. Uh, it, I kind of like it. Can she skip? I can always keep keep tabs on her. Can she skip? There's a lot of things she can't do. Like normal things. Like she can't whistle. I don't think whistling, she can. Like, whistling is kind of a coin toss. A coin toss. It seems like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. I feel like a lot of Asians can't whistle. 
It's like they weren't allowed. Is it a cultural thing? <laughs> they were, the whistling was probably banned or something. And the, you know, <laughs> like if I feel like if you if you whistle in Asian house, it'll be like, hey, knock that off. I man, I don't know. I'm I'm genuinely not curious. until you're a doctor. Is there is there some col- some cultural inclination toward whistling? On, on like the the Caucasian side of things, maybe. Like I think I've only ever seen white people whistle. It's it's kind of like you're, you're gonna you're gonna lose your hood pass if you whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't catch the don't let the brothers catch you whistling. Dude. <laughs> don't let them catch you. I, I I tried to think of the most diplomatic way to say that, and that's how it came out. The only black guy I've ever seen whistle is Wayne Brady, so that explains everything. Okay. That that checks out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne but, Brady's what approved. But uh Can you skip? Uh I can skip. No, that's that's something that you should you should try doing in public. Instead of wearing a mask. Yeah. Just start using skipping as your as your prefer, preferred form of uh you know <laughs> ambulation. What if you were what if you skipped everywhere while wearing the ball cloth? <laughs> That'd be I, really that's confusing. gonna send some mixed messages. Exactly, yeah, because it's like be... so innocent and like playful, but mm-hmm. then also kind of terroristy. So it's like, all right, what is you know? Should I be afraid or just you know uh, joyous? Should I feel? Should I feel feel glad? I don't know, dude. Can I put these imagine? Trump socks on and now. I'm just saying random shit. You know what? They like, do. They they do seem to be doing weird things to your brain. It's like sockatui, you know, ratatouille, but <laughs> it's just controlling me. It's taking over. <laughs> it's taking over, dude. I wonder if I comb the hair the other way, if it'll, if it'll change. I, you know what would be really impressive is if they were, you know, you know those cushions that like you you swipe the, you swipe the cushion and you flip the orientation of the, the little sequined uh, scales on it. And yeah, it makes a picture. Oh yeah. If you could have socks like that and they were dual, they were dual purpose. Like Kamala's on the other side. No, it was it was like <laughs> depending on who you're hanging out with. I think I think the hair would have to stay, but it could be like the Grinch or Trump. <laughs> That'd be clever. Yeah, I, I think I think like interchangeable Grinch, Trump socks. Right. Yeah. Would be would be first of all doable. Right. And second of all, uh, a fun statement. I don't know. What if it's a what if it's a Republican? What if it's a Trump rally on Christmas Day? Which one do you do? stay away then you have to they have to be automated you have to be they have to be able to like like those changing billboards that shift oh yeah they have to automatic automatically go switch between every 10 seconds i think i think i would go grinch grinch would be cool there there's got to be a meme of grinch with the trump haircut with the trump hairdo (laughs) they actually do have the same hair that's that's why i was thinking of that's a good I've, i've seen like I'm pretty sure I've seen some Grinch socks out there. And I was like, if you could make it dual color, depending on the orientation. Yeah. Like you turn them inside out or whatever. Right. And it's Trump on one side and Grinch on the other. I think it could be done. You could even do it four way. Like the inside is something two two different, two completely new designs. I don't know. I, I think that that may be beyond the scope of current sock technology. I know. I don't think we're there yet. Or, or investor interest. We can... <laughs> I was going to say, wait, we just caught a rocket from space. <laughs> we should be able to do this with socks. I, I, I mean, the, the rocket the rocket thing makes sense because there's market forces driving that. That's fair. Did you look at the text that I sent you? Yeah, I was I was texting you back when you walked in the door. Oh. And right. I was like, is this because is this, uh, Ian texted me a single word and it was a weird word that I didn't understand. And then I was going to text you back. I was like, is this like a psychological thriller where you say a word that will make sense in context like two years from now and then but i'll know it when i see it and it's like a, a word that's gonna like save my life but i don't think that way and you sent me a picture <laughs> so the word was tumbleweave and the picture is is that a wig <laughs> is that someone's scalp and a coke can or a little jelly can no that is a empty uh buzz ball a buzz ball what the hell's going on here, dude? <laughs> Tumbleweave? Is this like someone was somebody with a weave just ate shit? Like they were chug they were pounding these mini cocktails I don't know, man. with their weave on. <laughs> and then they tripped. It's like a mis- it's like a mystery story that I found. This looks like a crime scene. <laughs> Did you call the cops? No. 
Did you find this? Yes. This is just where? Where is this? This is a parking garage in LA. That's a parking garage? Why does the floor look like someone's basement? It looks like wood or something. It's because, just dirty concrete. Because so many streams of liquid have, have flown, oh, God. flown downhill. Oh, no. Yeah, what is the context of this? Uh, this is just something that I saw, and I took a picture. I know, today. but I'm saying, like, what? What do you think? Let's make up some theories. Let's. Uh, I think some I think some theories. some trashy people got wasted and trash did trashy things in a parking garage, and this is the fallout of it. Um, I also sent you another picture if you care to review that. Uh, no, you guys. Uh, I'm I'm throwing these photos up so you guys can weigh in on what do you think's going on here. Let's help us piece together the story. Ew. <laughs> What the hell's that? It's either chicken noodle soup or puke. <laughs> there's just a there's just a hefty Ziploc bag on the cement, abandoned with a bunch of <laughs> not sus- ten feet away from suspicious. Really, the same site? Yeah, yeah, like 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 five strides away. You you should have put like those little uh, the numbers like the little triangle numbers <laughs> next to each one, like a crime scene, like one, two, and three. I I. <laughs> I kind of mentally did that in my head, and I was like, "These things correlate." I think. All right. Yeah. I mean, the 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 if it was a bag of the bag of puke makes sense because of the cocktail, but then the wig. I mean, someone was just maybe it was like a Halloween party. They usually they usually just it is October. I, that's true. That's true. And I, get, I would. I, they're called they're called tumble weave, when there's like a lot of a lot of, you know. What women Puke? women who are inflicting violence on each other, and they they <laughs> they rip at each other's hair. Yeah, and then you end up with you know wigs or or weaves laying on the ground. Ah, especially especially in the vicinity of bus stops. Could you like I, I can't tell if this is a costume wi- wi- wig weave wig, or if it's someone's actual like I I didn't care to find out. Yeah, uh, I did. I did get the picture lit pretty well, though. It is very well lit, but also like scary lit, like just it's very harsh lighting. <laughs> the harsh flash makes it look like a horror movie. <laughs> well, I use a, I use a flashlight. Oh, okay, no wonder that that's that's the tracks. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like this at all. And it looks, and the thing is, is like that bag looks fresh. Like that, the bag of vomit looks like <laughs> it was put there two seconds ago like, <laughs> like five minutes before you got there this that's when this all went down i like how the bag's not even closed too. they didn't even <laughs> use the ziploc properly they just left it wide open no and i i can tell you that having walked past it it was not chicken noodles <laughs> oh so you so you know you smelt it God. I, oh. didn't, I didn't go up to smell it but i i, I encountered the smell oh no that's a lot too. That's a big. That's like a. It's like a quarter. Quart, quart, it's a quart bag or something. It's like that's like a gallon bag. A gallon dude. bag, dude. I can't tell from the photo. It's but like it a looks quarter big. gallon of puke. What the hell? Well, now I'm jealous. Now, now I'm jealous to know somebody people had, having more fun than somebody me. Somebody had a great weekend, but they're probably they're probably pretty hungover today. I was like a friend of ours when we uh, took too much of something and. Uh, just pulled up to like a Taco Bell drive through It's like, yeah, I'll get the number three. Opens his door. <laughs> like driver's side. He's in the driver. He's driving. Just like threw up like like a gallon of wine, <laughs> which just looked it looked demonic because it just looked like he was just vomiting this crimson blood, dude. It was crazy. And then just like immediately just shut the door and was like, all right, thanks. And just like grabbed the tacos and bailed. Like it was nothing. Was this Del Taco or Taco Bell? Uh, might have been Del Taco actually. <laughs> Usually, when rowdy shit like that goes down, it's it's a talk, it's a Del Taco night. Just vom- I, I've never vomited wine. I feel like that would be a very just evil Crimson Tide kind of thing to vomit up. Yeah, no, you ne- you never hit the uh, the Franzia. No, the bag wine, the box wine. Oh, it's just in a giant bladder. It's like literally a yeah. gallon of wine with a with a spout they with come, a tap. They come in the cardboard box. Yeah, I have seen those. I've not I've not encountered them with my mouth. That's that's the type of wine you usually puke out because uh, it's, it's just just, a, just qual- quantity over quality. Yeah, yeah. I remember like one like whenever we would be out of beer to pl- we like we wanted to play beer pong. We would just buy a, <laughs> get a fucking box. It'd be a box that's, of wine. That's so practical. It was nice. It was great for beer punk because it's got the spout. Yeah, you know, and there's no foam. 
like beer. But you get but you get wine stains all over the thing, right? You yeah, it was, the, it, was the 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 it was the dorms. It was the Oh, Okay, so nothing, nothing actually nothing too bad. Permanent matters there. Yeah, exactly. We just threw up in Ziploc bags. <laughs> <laughs> I got, after that, after that happened, uh, I actually ended up getting. Uh, they're called emesis bags. They're they're bags that are made specifically for puking, okay. for like you know hospitals and stuff. Yeah, because there are settings where. You know, you want a purpose-built device for people to puke in because you're expecting them to puke. Right. And uh, I kept a few of those in my car. I don't think I, I don't think I restocked my my newest car with those. Yeah. But like once, because I just had them in like the side door pocket. So I was like, yeah. If there's somebody in my car who has to puke for whatever reason, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> risk it. I'm gonna make the make sure they have an opportunity to just. That's wise. You know. Get it, get it all in one place with the minimum, and and the their their design is clever too. Yeah, because it's kind of a lot, like a long skinny bag. Right, and then the neck is rigid. It's like this plastic ring. Yeah, um, and then you just it, it once the the bag oh, is yeah, full. I think I've seen those. You twist it and right. then seals it. Uh, yeah, it's like it's almost like the way that um uh, you know that ring clamps around the 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 bread bag. Yeah, the. The there's twist little thing. there's little clampy things built into the top, so gotcha. you just twist it up and you clamp it shut. And yeah, kills the odor. Yeah, that's nice. I I feel like uh we we need we do need some new like like anti barf technology where it'd be cool if like the barf bag was built into like your your shirt collar, and then like it and it detects when you when you're having a reflex, oh. and then it automatically de- like inflates like a like like an emergency <laughs> slide out of a plane, and then you just it just automatically seals around your mouth. So, because a lot of the time, like people are so trashed, they can't even reach for the bag. You know what I mean? Like you, you need uh, it needs to be automated. Uh, I actually, I believe there is the answer. That would be crazy. That'd be an insane. Uh, yes, I am sending you. I'm sending you the uh, commercially available option. What's going on here? Anti gravity pocket for shifting gravity fields. Um, yeah, it's a whole suit. It's 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 a very very expensive uh, brand of of techwear clothing. So if you're like, uh-huh. I watched a whole bunch of cyberpunk and now I want to dress like a cyber ninja, right? Um, then then you might spend money on this brand. Four hundred dollars for pants. Yeah, I guess that's not terrible. <laughs> you live. You live in a bubble. I know, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> well, did you see how much this jacket costs? Oh, it's on sale for $647. Normally, it's uh, $1,300. Damn. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good deal now. But that Six, that is oh, you, have, you have to admit, that's a cool-looking pocket, right? It is. But the fact that the it's The circle thing for, on his chest is a pocket? Yeah. It's it's okay. uh, it's like the screw top for a camelback. Gotcha. I think. But the whole, the whole point is, like, if you have to puke, you just... You just unscrew that and you puke into your, <laughs> puke into your jacket. Seven, your thirteen hundred dollars yeah. jacket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they actually call it a vomit pocket. Yeah. <laughs> so it lit, that is literally what it's designed for. Yes. Oh, because it's anti gravity. Yes, because you have a bunch of people who are just designing ridiculous clothing <laughs> with ridiculous <laughs> ideas and then selling it for ridiculous prices, and for some reason it works. Oh my god. Yeah, you should you should uh, if you build it. They have, will come. Have a look through this this website's uh, catalogs. This would be this would be an amazing video if I just had them send me one and then like got really wasted and then <laughs> threw up in the jacket just to test it out. No, you'd have to you'd have to go on the vomit comet. Oh yeah, that's true. That you'd true. have to wear this jacket on the vomit comet. Just load up on some Chipotle right before. Oh, that would be that would be. Load good. up on some good Mexican food. Either that or like some some split pea soup. Oh man, for the for the classic green spray. Do they have, do they sell these transparent? That'd be uh, so funny. I think they have they some that are. I think they have some clothes that are like translucent. I want a translucent vomit vomit <laughs> pocket, and this just just you can just see it spraying. Then you, that's what the ziploc. That's that's where you come back to the ziploc bag. Oh my god. Is there a shitting pocket? Can you shit? Is it? Can you shit in your pants? Uh, that's they gotta have tech wear for that. That's, that's called a diaper, my dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, 
they got to class it up like this. This is they have barf bags too, but this is next level barf bag. They need a next level diaper. I saw a next level built into uh, your pants. It was it was like an Emesis bag, but it was for for Dookie uh-huh. uh, at the Air and Space Museum. It was actually quite the quite the impressive feat of engineering. Because yeah. imagine imagine trying to take a dump, but gravity is not pulling the poop right. away from you. Right. So, so it's like it's, a living. It's kind of stuck to you. <clears throat> right. right. Yeah. Because because normally gonna gravity gravity is going to make it drop. Right. But if there's no gravity, then then you have excreted this waste, but it's probably more likely than not still stuck to you. So do you have to poop while running if you were, <laughs> if you wanted, if you didn't, have, if, you, if you really wanted to detach, um, or like swing on a monkey bar and then right when you're swinging forward, take a shit. Uh, my understanding of of contemporary free fall technology for for. Waste elimination is that it involves a vacuum. Oh, okay. Um, no, you need which, a- <laughs> which makes a lot of sense for capturing urine. Yeah. Uh, but for feces, I'm not. I'm not 100. percent So what a- I saw <laughs> was was old. This, we're talking like this is from like the 60s or 70s. Oh, okay. But it was just, It was like it was a kind of a long, tall bag, but it had a couple of unique features. It had a sticky ring at the top. Ah. So it was like the poop sticks you, to it. No, no, it oh. sticks around the pooper. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha. you you peel off the top, and then it exposes this flat surface that's sticky. Uh huh. And you basically stick it onto yourself. Right. So that way the poop can't get free. I see. So it's number one containment. So it's like human centipede technology. <laughs> I don't know if I would use that terminology, but it's it's containment. Yeah. Uh, so with a seal, with a seal, yeah, right. And then the other thing that I thought was was very clever was the addition of a little a little finger pocket in the bag. Okay. So uh, and once the bag is attached to you, there's there's some accessories in the bag. One of them is probably like a little sachet of activated charcoal or something to absorb odors. Yeah. So the other one looked like it was a little bit of toilet paper. Yeah. So you put the bag on. You do your business, and at some point, you hopefully prearrange to have your fingertip gripping this little piece of toilet paper. Ah. Because there's a little finger hole that goes through the bag. It's like your bag is is gloved inside of the bag. Right, right. But your finger is manipulating the uh, the toilet paper. Oh, damn. And then I'm guessing you just rip the whole thing off and seal it shut and launch it out an airlock. So you're supposed to wipe your ass with just one finger. They should do a modern a modern update to the the shit pocket where it's like they use the same machine that they use to catch the super heavy, which is like chopsticks. That's just like clamp around your turd as it comes out, <laughs> just and then it just like chops it uh, off. That's that's what your sink does, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Have to, you but have but to you still need that. you still need some chopsticks to like hold it in place so it doesn't stick to your leg <laughs> or something. That's assuming you're lucky enough that it's uh, cylindrical in shape. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> God, diarrhea in space must be ridiculous. That's why. That's why step one is containment. Oh my goodness! Because hey, you, you, we've all we've all trusted a fart when we shouldn't. Do you think someone's actually diarrhea in like the, in like a in like a space situation where um, there's diarrhea flying <laughs> flying around the? the I don't know, the, but I, <laughs> I think that's there's be. a notable uh, piece from one of the Apollo transcripts where somebody comments on like. Yo, that's like a piece of your turd floating around there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put that. But person imagine in the that lockout. in like a middle Atlantic uh, accent. From, yeah, you know, yeah. And over the radio from Apollo nine or eleven or whatever it was. Dude, splooging in space must be pretty fun. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you would do target. Pra- I would do target practice. It would actually, it it theoretically would impart a very small amount of thrust. Like it would, you would be. You'd shoot back. Yes. You shoot back a little bit because if some mass leaves your body leaving, right? You know, at whatever velocity, then yeah. your body is pushed back the other. Direction. I would have some cans floating, just some empty cans floating. You know, just target practice. So you're gonna build a skeet shooting, a, a goon, <laughs> goon cave in space, literal skeet shooting. 
Ah, uh, man. Good old science fiction. That's how you know. Yeah. That's how you know. Like, if you had to take a leak on Mars, you'd have an extra high arc because it's lower gravity. You have to, you'd have an extra. Oh, yeah. That is true. Because gravity on Mars is. Or on the moon. Uh, right? Yeah. The difference being that Mars has enough of an atmosphere that, well, I don't think I'd want to expose my dog to either uh, environment. Yeah. But, true, uh, true, true. Yeah. The moon, the moon is a very harsh environment because that's yeah. a hard vacuum and uh, either freezing, instant freezing or boiling of right. any exposed skin. Yeah, no thanks. Because because uh, if you're in the sun, yeah, you're getting like a thousand a thousand sunburns per minute. Oh God. Because because you know the sun has like sun has to filter through our atmosphere. Right, right. And it still burns us. Yeah. So imagine how bad that is in True. space. And if it's freezing, then you're going to have the most vicious tinnitus. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I mean? Like, like, God forbid there's like a hot astronaut right next to you. Uh, and then your dick gets exposed. <laughs> and then just immediately is the, the craziest tinnitus you've ever seen. Ironically. She'll never look at you the same. Depends on depends on the speed of, of things. Uh, the, low, the low pressure environment actually could. Yeah. Man, this is just the trashiest podcast today. <laughs> it's the Trump socks, dude. I blame the Trump socks. <laughs> they've possessed me. They've they've taken over. They've fully taken over. Uh, I was gonna say, depending on how how fast things take, I think the blood rushing to that area of your body affected by very low pressure, yeah, low atmospheric pressure, yeah, a vacuum, yeah, would probably quick be quicker than the freezing process. So your dick would just solidify and get you would probably chip off yeah yeah i mean yeah like an icicle mm-hmm. damn it just i mean if you die if you died in space i guess i would have to imagine you would you would die at, at full staff yeah, like, like in a vacuum oh god yeah i mean it would be horrible in a lot of ways yeah but you would you would not have to deal with post uh Post death tinnitus. It would it would be that's maximum potential is achieved lining. in death. Yeah, uh, that's the way I'd want to go. I'd prefer that route. <laughs> God, don't let me go out with a tinnitus. <laughs> don't let me. Don't do me dirty like that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. But um, dude, what else is up, man? I uh, I've been having the gnarliest farts because I started eating uh, protein shakes. Drinking oh. protein shakes. Yeah, that, that happens. I didn't realize. I, I always heard stories of like, oh, your farts are bad. Like they are on another level. They're I, like, I can't even stand them. Like I get mad at myself, <laughs> I, I but I can't I try to chase myself out of the room. I can't. <laughs> Have you accidentally? <laughs> I like let Dutch one out around uh, Mel. Dutch oven like, oh, yourself no. yet? What's that? Have you accidentally du- self Dutch ovened? Um, not, not in bed. No, I haven't done the Dutch oven, but just like sitting at my desk, like I'll just like let one rip without thinking and then just like, because seconds usually later, it's relatively lightweight, it's tolerable, innocent. whatever. Yeah, exactly. But then let one out today and I was just like, I had to excuse myself. I had to like stand up and walk around. It was like, really where bad. Did, where did I put the Febreze? Damn. I know it was bad. They do make, uh, uh underwear with, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's like a pad that you can stick in your underwear. It's it's like like adhesive like a menstrual pad, yeah. but it has activated charcoal in it. Ah. So that your fart passing through it, it right. a lot of the the odor gets absorbed. Ah, it's like a poopery. Yes. Sort of like that. Something something either either that or some underwear had that built in, I forget. It was it's been a while, but there was there was a bit of hubbub when that product got released. That's pretty smart. But yes, uh having having protein shakes will cause uh, a lot of a lot of smelliness to into your life at unexpected times i hope it goes away eventually well you may you may find that if you switch to a different type of protein like if you're getting a protein shake as protein that comes from milk and you're reacting poorly to that you could go and get protein from believe it or not you can get beef protein shakes that's the thing hmm. the one i have is plant protein i don't know what kind of plant though Probably a blend of soy, rice, and pea protein. Yeah. That's, that's 
it, I, I can see it. It does smell like all those things rotting together. <laughs> so it's very plausible. <laughs> uh, in other news, I am as as usual late to the party, uh, but I finally got uh, Baldur's Gate three. Mm. I saw. I caught a glimpse. I was like, "That doesn't look like the normal games you play." Yeah, dude, dude, how is it so far? It's very horny. <laughs> <laughs> very horny i will uh, i mean i i've i've you spend like five hours in character creation just like oh wow lots of options hmm. it did character creation did take a long time but i can change the size of anything i've been enjoying i've been enjoying the gameplay quite a lot but today yeah. i was actually looking at the community yeah and i was like my god it's just half hentai just it's hentai-esque it's, it's very very horny. Now, to to be fair, it seems like they they built that into the game. Like they built they built a lot of a lot of options for fornication into the game. Uh, Is it just because of the characters, the way they look, or the way they the, the like dress options or cleavage, or is it like it's the like, characters are actually banging and stuff? Oh, I think they're. I think they're. I I, I haven't really had that much oh, really? interest in it. Yeah, it's like it's like you know you can have romances in Mass Effect. Yeah, it's it's not super explicit it's mostly some fade to black stuff sure i think uh it goes much further in in ah, this game uh, damn i i've not been focused on that I've time been, to watch some gameplay videos i've been surprised by how engaging because i haven't i actually haven't played uh an mmo any any like oh. D D type like focus right. game like this right um there there have been plenty and i've i've played you know RPGs like you know technically Fallout is an RPG and Skyrim yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, now I know why D and D so popular. Can't have double D's without D and D. Dude, it is it is unbelievably horny. That's and, crazy. And, the, and like the, the the Baldur's Gate subreddit. Yeah. Um, I gotta tell you that that sounds so funny. And so so I tried to <laughs> I tried to limit my exposure. For Mostly, mostly because of that, and trying to try to limit spoilers. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, you know, when you when you get when you get a new game, you're like, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm gonna like read about it. And yeah. It's a, it's a dangerous path to go down in this case <laughs> for more reasons than one. Uh, but it is it is very well crafted. It's very it's very engaging and interesting story, and I'm having a lot of fun with the mechanics. But Boulder's Gape. Yeah. Damn. They went there. Pretty sure. I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't I'm know. Sure they did. <laughs> but the 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 potential is nearly unlimited. So yeah, it's at at least that's the impression that I get. Is it like? Do they have mods? Are people like modding oh, yes, the character? There, there are, okay, there okay. Once once you have mods, <laughs> it's game over. I mean, people were doing that with like Resident. Because I did the same thing with Resident Evil. And it's like Jill Valentine and like Ada Wong is just like, oh my god, what is that? Un- <laughs> is that unlockable? That's insane. Like. It just goes from like you know chicks like in bikinis with machine guns to just straight naked, <laughs> completely buck ass naked with a shotgun, so, just killing nemesis. Like what? So people are crazy. There's uh this this character that I that I ran into exploring a dungeon and it's like a, a an undead, like not a zombie but like kind of like a skeleton but with skin. Yeah, and. I don't know why he just kind of joined up with me and doesn't really do like they, they give you some options to, to mess with your character, like change your, your character. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so I made a mod to give them huge titties. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a guy. It's a guy. <laughs> I like the inclusion. I like the inclusivity. <laughs> oh my god! It's it's literally uh, the crypt keeper with tits. It's the crypt keeper with massive jugs. That's actually pretty funny. Hey, very well okay. done. Okay, so I found that and I laughed really hard. Right, shout out to the surgeon. Yeah. Better yet, they somehow this community somehow managed to, <laughs> to get the voice actor. On uh, yeah. what is that called? Um, cameo. Uh huh. They got the voice actor to read. <laughs> no. What is it? 
Oh, wait, shit. What happened? Did it... Uh, wait, so the, the voice actor... The voice actor actually read read this out in their character's voice. Every time thou hast summoned me, I have awoken to find a huge set of memories <laughs> upon my chest. There are no words in the common lexicon to explain how much I detest these bazongas. My back aches from the weight of these milk maidens. When I am looking down at my records, performing my duties, these massive milkers get in the way of my vision. I am forced to wear my plus-size cloak purely so my hungerlongers have ample room to breathe and do not cause me undue pain. I am exhausted and, uh, and unhealthy due to the constant modding ventures, and I demand thee to stop. Rid me of these enormous young, <laughs> young, long, long, <laughs> whatever that was. Yo, dong, along, hudong, galagongas. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> the barf bag was yours. We've solved the mystery. You are the culprit, dude. You are the culprit. <laughs> Uh, that's what I get for drinking all things are funny and happening. I'm gonna buy you that jacket pretty soon. I'm, I think that's a that's a cry for wanting that jacket. Uh, you need that jacket, dude. Great, that's now amazing. My, my sinuses taste like kiwi. Oh God, <laughs> jeez Louise, what is what is going on? Um, what else, dude? Oh, so. Mel and I were wondering this because I was like watching her wash dishes and we had this conversation. So she uses the back side of a sponge to clean dishes, but then she'll use the, the harder scrubby side if there's like stuff that's hard to get off. Yeah. And I just use the scrubby side all the time. Like I rarely ever use the back side. We Googled it. Apparently there both camps are, you know, exist. There's some people who use and they're both at war. sides. What's that? And I'm sure they're at war. And they're at war, of course. Uh, I didn't get too far into the weeds, but uh, I didn't even know that people use the backside. I thought that everyone just used the front, like the, the hard part. I thought the backside of the sponge was just there to have something to grab onto. So what's, what's the, what's the debate here? Which side of the sponge do people, do you use? And, and in your mind, like what's the normal, what's normal? Cause it seems oh, like yeah. it's, it's fairly divided because it, it, even after she explained it, it's like, yeah, I get that for sure. But I still, I think I'm just, you know, obviously old habits die hard. I don't, I'm so lazy. Like I, I won't, I don't want to flip the sponge midway washing. Mm. I don't have to keep flipping it, flopping it, flipping it, flopping it. So I just go rough side all the time so that I'm always, I'm always covered. Well, I think there's, there's, I can see, I can see where the room for argument exists. Yeah. I typically default to the, the rough side of the sponge. Okay. Uh, if I notice that, because it's more aggressive and yeah. and I think efficient. Sure. If if the the dish or utensil that I'm using is particularly susceptible to scratching, yeah, then I will I will try to use the soft side of the sponge. You must have some nice dishes. Every I mean every now and then, like you have you have some some stainless steel dishes. Yeah. Uh, like like cookware. Right. I always use the hard the hard side. There are people who prefer to just use soft it up. Because what that what that does over time is the using the the really scrubby aggressive part of the sponge, you get like swirl patterns and scratch scratch marks on your I stuff. See. Yeah. Um and some people see you know think that's unsightly and and they prefer to have mm, you know minimal pristine, marring. Yeah. Right. Pristine pots and pans. I get that. Right. As you know, if it's if it's glass or ceramic, go nuts. Sure. If it's metal or something soft, um, then there's more. I think there's more room for that argument to exist. Yeah. My perspective is scrubby side, best side. Sure. I I will use discretion when I think it's warranted. Yeah. Uh, if I'm, you know, washing somebody's nice cookware and I'm trying to be careful, I'll use the spongy side. Yeah. But if you got dried crusted on stuff and you want to get after it, that's what the scrubby side is for. Yeah, that makes opinion. sense. Do you know what milk lines are? I sell out. What? Do you know what milk lines are? No, no. you don't. Uh, but you should look them up sometimes. It's an interesting thing to learn about. Milk lines. It's where it's where nipples can grow on a human body. Where they can grow? Mm-hmm. Like uh, 
what do you mean like outside of the chest area outside of the no- the normal place where you expect to find them oh like the the typical placement of, of nipples yeah statistically average yeah and then there are supernumerary nipples right which can appear on like these pretty distinct nipple highways of the body like oh there are, there are lines running along your body where they're that that's that's, that's a like, potential place where they can pop up and those lines are like kind of like uh those like milk plumbing it's plumbing yeah. for milk like it's, that's they that's that's it yeah so where's the weirdest place you can grow a nipple i dep- i guess it depends on what you find weird but it's 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 like like how extreme are we talking here like a nipple on your forehead there's probably no milk lines there i don't think so no Probably maybe like, you know, your armpit or something like that. It's it's basically like this. Oh, okay. Damn. So you could have a nipple way down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kinda hot. Except you don't have one. That you know of. A lot of a times people people have uh supernumerary nipples, but they think they're uh like a mole. Because they're not they're not uh, they're not necessarily like as uh-huh. distinctive and developed as as you know standard issue nipples right whoa that's crazy yeah so then someone out there is probably just like you know like in bed with their partner like can you suck on my mole it just feels really good for some reason (laughs) it just when you tickle my mole i don't know i have no idea but i like my mole if you look up that illustration you'll be like oh if i'm looking at this part of my body and there's a i something that i think is a mole there it may be it may actually not be that yeah i could have been fooled that's like what if you found out that your dick was actually just a nipple I think that would be about genitals. Like, damn it, pretty pretty obvious to any even casual observer. But I don't know though, because when you tickle it, it still gets hard. I'm not exploring this line of reasoning. Fair enough. <laughs> ironic, <laughs> ironic that I draw the line there. <laughs> you drew G- the you drew the milk. You had to draw the milk line somewhere. <laughs> given given the 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 topics and content that we've uh, <laughs> yeah co- covered, that's where we draw the line. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We will see you next week. Adios. Later. I have about fucking had it with thy mods. Every time thou hast summoned me, I have awoken to find a huge set of memories upon my chest. There are no words in the common lexicon to explain how much I detest these bazongas. My back aches from the weight of these milk maidens. When I am looking down at my records, performing my duties, these massive milkers get in the way of my vision. I am forced to wear my plus-sized cloak, so my hudonga longers have room to breathe and do not cause me undue pain. I am exhausted and unhealthy due to thy constant modding ventures, and I demand thee to stop. Rid me of these enormous yodonga long udonga lagangas at once. Yes, well, more words fail me.